Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to DJ TLM TV. My name is DJ TLM and this is part three of my mix tutorial series. Today it's time to get busy with the decks and I'm going to show you how to beat match by ear. I'll be showing you using my turntable setup, but like I always tell you in my tutorials, you can use CD players or a controller, some DJ software. It doesn't matter. This is fundamental technique and this will work with any piece of DJ equipment. Now, beat matching is one of those essential things you need to know if you want to make a smooth transition from the song that's playing to the next song, the song on your other deck. If you want to make that a smooth mix, then you're going to have to match the beats. You're going to have to make sure that they're playing at the same speed, the same tempo, and not all songs have the same tempo. So you're going to have to adjust the tempo of the new song to make it fit with the song that's playing. You're going to have to make sure that they're running in sync. Now for the guys out there with controllers and DJ software, you're probably familiar with that term sync because you're going to have a function in your software called sync. And this function can automatically beat match for you. So that's pretty convenient. If your songs have been analyzed so that the software can recognize the BPM, the beats per minute, then it can automatically adjust the tempo of the new song to the song that's playing. So that's basically what we're going to do right here by ear, do it manually, your software can do that for you. So pretty cool and a lot of guys use that when they get a controller because it's a function on there and hey, click, wow, I can mix. Very cool, but I would always advise that you learn how to beat match by ear as well. Just for the fact that you know that you can do it, that's already cool, but it might save you one day if for whatever reason your sync function isn't working, then you have to back up. You can always rely on that knowledge that you can do it by ear. And even more important than that, it's a lot of fun. To me and to a lot of DJs, it's a lot of fun. And not just because it's where I started, because this is the first thing I learned when it comes to mixing. I learned how to beat match by ear. But I also spoke to a lot of new DJs who started with controllers, started with sync, and after a while, got bored and started experimenting with just beat matching by ear. And they were like, this is a lot more fun. And it is because you're in total control. It's going to make your DJing and your mixing a lot more organic because now you're manually manipulating the platters, your equipment to adjust the tempo, you're touching the sliders, everything. And the total control part is important to me. It's like driving a car with cruise control. My last car had cruise control and I used it a couple of times and I, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't deal with the fact that the car took over part of the control. Even if it was just switching lanes, I was in control of steering but not the gas pedal and I did not like that. And it's the same for me with DJing. I'm using the SP1 right here. This is my little controller for Serato DJ. I have the sync function right there but I want to be in control. So that's why I prefer to beat match by ear. So it's fun, try it out. And very important, before you get into this video, make sure that you check my counting music tutorial. It's gonna teach you about beats, bars, and phrases, and that is essential knowledge if you wanna start to mix. And it's gonna help you a lot when you're practicing your beat matching. So I have the link right there and right there in the description. Now let's take a look and I'll show you what you need to know and need to do in order to beat match by ear. Let's go. All right guys, time to do a little bit of beat matching over here. I have my set ready. I have four tracks loaded. I don't even need four. I have two on internal mode playing uh, that I have on loop. So I can use those and I have two tracks that I can control with my turntables and I have the SP1 just to trigger my hot cues to take the tracks back to the first beat. I'm gonna use hip hop instrumentals, hip hop beats, and even if you're planning on just playing house music, dance music, whatever you wanna call it, uh, I suggest that you at least add a couple of hip hop beats to your practice regimen, because in my opinion, practicing beat matching with hip hop beats will give you a more solid foundation when it comes to beat matching. And I might do a different video on this to speak on this in depth, but that is definitely my opinion and I've seen over the years that it is more difficult and that's why it's better to start with that or at least add it to that practice regimen. 
So, this is gonna be the situation. We're gonna have one track playing over the speakers. That's the song that you're playing for the crowd. So I'm gonna take that loop right there. That's gonna be playing over the speakers. And in a normal situation, you're gonna take the song that you're gonna mix into it. I'm gonna take this one and you're gonna cue that on your headphone so you can hear it. And then you're gonna check on your headphone to see if it has the right tempo. Now the reason why you need to see the tempo, check the tempo, is very simple. I'm gonna give you the demonstration right now. I'm gonna play both songs without manipulating the tempo. I'm gonna play them in their original tempo, at their original speed. And I'm not gonna do it on the headphone because I'm showing you right now, so I'll do everything over the speakers. That song is playing. And I'm gonna add this one right now. Normal speed. <laughs> ah, okay, that's what you call a train wreck. And I hope, I really hope that you heard that that was not right. If that sounded good to you, then I don't know if you're ready for this. You should be able to at least hear that the two tracks were totally clashing. The drum sounds for maybe the first half second sounded like they were playing well, almost in sync at the same speed and then you could tell that they were going in their own direction and that's because they're not playing at the same speed and drums start to clash and that that's that train wreck and that's going to happen when you practice and that's what practice is for and it might even happen to you while you're playing in a club and i've had that happen in my earlier years that i thought i had the tempos correct and i didn't have it quite right if you don't have it quite right, it won't go apart that fast, but after a while, they will separate and you will get that clashing if you don't pay attention. But you learn to recognize that pretty early. So we need to adjust the tempo of the song that we're adding to the mix. And we need to know a piece of crucial information to do this. Is the track that you're adding to the mix too fast or too slow? If it's too fast, you need to slow it down. If it's too slow, you need to speed it up. But you need to know if it's too fast or too slow. Otherwise, you can't continue with the next, um, the next move, and that's going to the pitch control. So back in the days, you had to do that by ear. You had to hear it. So I always take a focus point, and I normally use the, the, the snare drum. That one right there. Because I find that snares are more distinctive and are better to hear in a beat than kick drums. Because a lot of times kick drums can sound a little bit more the same. I know snares can too, but it's easier for me at least to recognize the snare. So I focus on the snare and I, I try to hear if the snare drums are staying on point. And I could tell within that first second that this one was too slow. So that's what I do. But nowadays, because I know a lot of you guys will be using a digital vinyl system or CD players or a controller with some DJ software and you're using MP3s and probably those MP3s will be analyzed with a BPM analyzer or you're using Rekordbox. Anyway, your software or your hardware, your CD player is probably gonna be able to tell you the tempo of the song. So you're gonna have that information. That means I can do that in Serato too in my list. I can see that this track is, um, and I don't know right now because I don't, my monitor is too far away, but this is probably 98. And this is probably something like 95 or something. Because I could tell this one is definitely slower. But you can tell, if you can see that in your information, then you already know, hey, this one is slower. So it's cool to practice, to hear it, be able to hear it, if it's slower or faster, but you probably have that info on your screen. And you can use that as well. And for instance, if this one is 98 and that one is 95, then I'm gonna know that I have to speed it up at least 3% to get into the, the right range. So it's gonna be an indication. It's never gonna be perfect, but it's gonna give you that indication, hey, you need to be around that area. But right now, I don't know the BPM for sure, so I'm gonna do it without knowing, but I only know for sure is that this track is slower, so I'm gonna need to speed this up. 
Now that you know that, you can take that next step, and that is to increase the speed. You're gonna use your pitch slider, and any device made for DJing, for mixing, will have pitch control. It's gonna be on the turntable, it's gonna be on the CD player, it's gonna be on your controller, or it's gonna be inside your software. You're gonna be able to speed it up or slow it down. Plus is speeding it up, minus size, slowing it down. So I know I need to speed it up. Now there's a couple of ways to test to see if the song is playing in the right tempo. You wanna try and keep this song playing at the same speed as the other song, as this one. But it's too slow, so I already know I need to speed it up, but I wanna keep it at that same speed the whole time and then check by ear, is it staying at that same speed or is it losing tempo again and do I need to give it more pitch? So what I do is I use my hand to give my platter nudges. And I do it kind of rough, so I give it a big nudge and I increase the tempo at least two or more if I can hear that it needs more. And then I listen for a second. Is it staying together? Oh, no, it's still not there. Then I give it another big nudge, increase the speed a lot again. A lot of times after two or three of those nudges, it goes a little bit too fast and then I start to slow it down, not in big moves, but slower moves because I know that I'm getting near where it needs to be. And I'm gonna show you that technique first and after that I'll show you a different technique that's a little more subtle. So, the track is playing. Too slow, nudge, and speed it up. Too slow, nudge, Speed it up. Getting closer, but still a little too slow. Little nudge, and increase the speed a little bit. Not as much as before. It sounds a little bit too fast, like the snare is a little bit too fast, so. Little nudges and bring it back a little bit. Too slow. Speed it up a little bit more. Now, I'm not fine tuning. You can continue that for a little while until you get it 100% right, but that was definitely close enough. And that's the technique I like to use. And normally when I'm doing it in a club, I do it even rougher than that, but that's the basic technique that I use. I give it that nudge, give it that increase of speed, and I know it needs to be sped up more than just a little bit, so I, I, I took it up two. I could tell that it's still definitely too slow. And you can tell if it's still going apart fast enough, then the tempo difference is still quite big. So I gave it another big nudge all the way to four. Then I could tell that my snare was a little bit ahead of the other snare. So I had to slow it down, but not a lot. So I'm not giving it a big, big nudge back and taking the tempo a whole way back. I just gave it gentle nudges, slowing it down a little bit. And I took the pitch back just a little bit. Then you listen again. I heard that I had to give it a little more speed just a little bit so you start with big moves and then you go to more subtle moves because you're just fine tuning to get it to get it right so that's my technique on your platters your jog wheels the feeling is going to be different with any controller or cd player or turntable make no mistake it's not even the same on turntables my techniques feel different than my vestax and they feel different than my newmark turntables i have to give each one their own nudge and it maybe takes me the first track to find that right move again. It's the same as cars. I like to bring cars into my uh, uh, examples. If you step into someone else's car, their clutch will feel different. Their brakes will feel different and it will take you a minute to feel if you have to press the brake as hard as your own brake or if you have to give it a more gentle touch. So same thing with the platters. So you need to experiment with your own equipment and find out the best way to deal with that. But that's one way. The second way is more subtle because you're not gonna be touching the platter and giving that the big nudges, but it is all about your pitch slider. So I'm bringing this back now to the zero. I already know I have to speed it up. I already know where it has to be. But what you're gonna do now is you're gonna use your pitch slider to do the same thing I did with my hands. So. When I start it and I throw it in, I know I'm gonna to need to give it a nudge, but instead of touching the platter, I'm gonna increase the pitch, but not a little bit, but 
all the way to eight. Bang, so it goes a lot faster, but I also bring it back quite fast. So what happens is you just give it that quick boost of speed and then you decrease the speed again. So that has the same effect as giving it the nudge. But I don't take it from zero to eight and all the way back to zero because I know that I need to speed up the track. So I'll give it that nudge, bang, and then I bring it back to maybe two. That's what I did when I gave it my nudge with the hand. I did bang and I took it to two. Now I'm not doing my hand movement. I take that to eight, bring it back to two. And then I listen. If I need to speed it up more, I do that same movement again, bang, and I'll bring it back to three or four. And if I find out that I'm going too fast and I need to slow it down, then I do the same thing, but not that way, but to the minus side. So bang, bang. That's the same as slowing it down. So let me show you. First one, too slow. Again, bam. Now I'm at two. One more. Now I'm at four. That sounded pretty good already. It's maybe a little bit too fast, so a little bit back. Almost there. A little bit too slow. A little move. There you go. So that had the same effect, but you're not using your hand on the platter. So that's a technique you can use. I don't like to use it with my techniques because my pitch slider has a built-in function where it stops at zero. So it clicks into place, which makes it a little bit harder to do smooth adjustments. The guys who use this technique, it's an old school technique. A lot of times if a turntable had that stop in the middle, they would open up the turntable, take that out to make the fader smooth all the way like a normal fader. And then you would see them just going back and forth with that pitch, first the big movements and then smaller movements and fine tune it until they found their point. So that's a technique that you can try. Third one, on a lot of controllers, you're gonna have two buttons right near the, the, the pitch slider with a plus and a minus on there. And if you press those, they have the same effect as a nudge. If you press them shortly, it'll be a little nudge. If you press them longer, it'll be a bigger nudge. Or if you press the minus, then it'll slow it down. That can do the same thing. And some people like to use that as well. And they'll be on that plus minus while they're increasing their pitch. So you have different ways of doing it. But I like to do the this manual thing. And that is because I'm dealing with turntables, with moving platters, real torque. So it feels good to to do it by hand like that. Just my preference, see what works for you, but you know what the deal is. You need to increase the pitch to match it to the tempo of the song that's already playing, in this case, because it was too slow. If it would be too fast, then you would have to slow it down. But it is the same deal. And if I have to slow this one down, then I'm not giving it nudges, but then I'm slowing it down and in uh, decreasing the tempo until I get it right. Now there is one more tip that I would like to give you guys, you digital guys using your laptops out there. You can use your screen as a little bit of visual help as well because a lot of times you're gonna see the, the wave files like a Serato and Tractor, you see your tracks. So you see them both there and you can check your snare drums and you can see if they're at that same point or if they're running behind or going ahead of each other. So you could use that as visual aid. Try to do it without, but just a quick tip, if you were having trouble in the beginning hearing it, you can also look at your screen. So that's for you digital guys out there, but make sure that you learn to do it just by ear. Have that basic knowledge in you that will help you always. So guys, I hope this info helps you out and now it's up to you. It's time to start practicing and you're gonna need a lot of practice to make this second nature and it's gonna become second nature after a while. So I have to stress the fact that you need to check my counting music tutorial once again and if you have done that already, then you're probably good to go and you can go ahead and start to practice your beat matching. But if you don't know anything about counting music yet, you don't know what a bar is and a beat is, please check that video first before you start the beat match. Practice, practice, practice. That's what it is. You need to practice a lot. It's gonna help you out. This is the first step 
on your way to become a good mixing DJ. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure that you click that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already so you don't miss out on any of my future videos because I have a lot of videos coming. And check djtlmtv.com. If you have any questions or requests for video, you can always hit me on the email djtlmtv at djtlm.com. And I'll be back soon with the next installment in this mix tutorial series because there's a lot more knowledge that we need to talk about. So practice, 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 essential practice. Share the knowledge and I'll be back very soon. Peace out, y'all.